Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be your most informative video yet. Amerilegion, AMCF, the debt acknowledgement program, as well as the securing one's property program. All of you, this is for you. As you've heard, we have sent out a ton of documents on your behalf. Even for those of you who are with the debt acknowledgement program, any debtor that you notified us of, we notified them. I, I don't sit up here and tell us about somebody new. That, that ain't the way this works. I'll be instructing the staff. You come up with somebody new, you won't get no response. But let me talk to you for a second. Amera Legion, especially AMCF. AMCF especially has had over 33 documents mailed out. Some of them you will not get a copy of because that's, you know, for us. But the majority of them, you have already received copies or are receiving copies of those documents. What are those documents for? Those documents are for you to court, for you to do the quiet title. Did a video on quiet title yesterday. I would go watch it if I were you. You're going to be doing a quiet title action. You're going to be highlighting the fact that the companies that you're dealing with have violated the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. You're going to highlight the fact that not only did they violate the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, but they also violated your power of attorney by not dealing directly with the party to whom you gave power of attorney. That you were doing verification of debt, not validation. Validation of debt only requires them to provide the name of the party, the address of the so-called original creditor, and the so-called amount of the debt. That's validation. We don't care about validation. Go back and read the act. The act says any portion of the debt being disputed must be verified by the original creditor, not by the debtor. Any portion of the debt, ladies and gentlemen, well, <laughs> the original funding is a portion of the debt. So we were challenging the original funding, but guess what? They gave us their statement of claim. We produced our statement of claim. They gave us their statement of accounting, their claim. We gave them our, your statement of accounting, our claim. Guess what they didn't do? They have never once disputed our accounting. Ta-da. So now you get to go into court. Why? Because the law says that they cannot proceed one step further until they verify the debt. This is not up to a judge to decide. We want a trial by jury. We don't want a jury trial. Then they're going to get upset because we're not asking for a jury trial. We're asking for a trial by jury. We're kind of taking and tying their hands and, you know, that type of stuff. But we're doing a petition for quiet title. Again, video done yesterday. Here's the thing. All of you individuals of the who signed up for the organizations that I mentioned, AmeriLegion, AMCF, the Debt Acknowledgement Program, and the Fourth Amendment Program, what you need to understand is what we've done for you is we've created a record. You guys even have notary presentments, which verify the fact they've been notified. They have never once provided verification of the debt, ever. See, verification has to come from the original creditor. It cannot come from the original creditor months ago. Okay, it has to come from the original creditor at the time that verification is being demanded. They cannot say, we already got this from the creditor. They can already have gotten something from the creditor, but this doesn't show the original funding. We specifically, because we know that they'll never provide that information. Okay, they will never provide proof of the original funding because there was no original funding. Ladies and gentlemen, there were just a creation of credits. There was no original funding. They cannot show proof of where the funds came from. There was no original funding. You guys need to understand that. That is very important. That's why we challenged it. I'll just say it before any of y'all say it. Ta-da! That's why we challenged it. Because there's no proof of original funding. Now, some of you guys are afraid of the courts. I would really go listen to the videos that deal with foreclosure and assassination and <laughs> the so-called quiet title action. 
I would listen to all three of those videos. Or there might be four. But I'd listen to them. The reason why I would listen to them plus this video is because it lets you know that what you can do and you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. So look, I'm going to mute my microphone because I want you to hear. One of our clients is dealing with a company called Midland and MidFirst Bank. They're the same bank. One just is the mortgage portion of the bank, just like Wells Fargo Mortgage and Wells Fargo NA. Uh, the bank NA are two, two different corporations, but the same bank, same owners. So what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to play the audio where he called the mortgage company. Now, I already spoke to the two lower impotent morons. Okay, check them both because I, I wasn't in the mood this afternoon. I really wasn't in the mood. Uh, it's been dealing with Amazon. It's been a horrific week. I wasn't in the mood for stupidity. So I checked the two other people because I am you're going to hear that I wouldn't let the client speak. You give us power of attorney, you give us power of attorney. I mean, we're going to have power of attorney or we're not. Although it's limited power of attorney, we need you to be quiet so that we can accomplish what we're trying to do. We're not going to do this for everybody. Please understand, this is a special circumstance. So... While talking with them, they transferred me to a supervisor. Now, we're already talking with the legal department. They're, she's going to mention that she talked to her legal team. No, we're already talking with the legal department. But if you will notice, every single moment, I am checking her on everything she's saying. She's trying to marginalize me and ignore me. And as I said at the very end of the call, I do not allow people to ignore me. You want to ignore me? I'll show you ignorance. You know what I mean? So we're going to let you listen. And at seven minutes, y'all. All right. So hold on. She, I want to start. No, I don't want to start. I want to follow the complaint, miss. I was very serious about that. That person lied. She led to this conversation happening, which is needless. But she lied and she did it intentionally. She specifically said that I told Brian not to speak. Okay, I want you guys before I should have introduced that part so that you guys see what's going on. The representative before her tried to ask questions of him by stepping, overstepping, ignoring me. And I told her, no, you will not. I will not allow you to do that. He is not going to say another word. He's already given you authorization to speak to me. You will speak to me directly and you will not address him. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Well, hold on. Okay, that's what we went through. You'll, you're, you're not going to hear that part of the conversation, but you're going to hear this part of the conversation. The supervisor had just said that the representative said, I refuse to let him verify himself. Now, that she said those exact words. And I said, okay, Brian, let her know that this particular wench, I didn't call her a wench, but that's what she is, that she sat up here and asked you to verify yourself, and you verified yourself. You've done it twice. And that at no time did you refuse to verify yourself. And so I said, so she lied to you because the supervisor said she said that we told him not to say anything. He couldn't say a word and he didn't have to answer no question. And that's we didn't say nothing like that. So no deceptive practices. Lying is deception. When you intentionally lie, you're intentionally attempting to deceive. She deceived the supervisor. Like I said, that's what led to this conversation. See, ladies and gentlemen, when you listen to the conversation, I'm going to shut up in a minute so you can hear it. This is me on the fly. Without preparation or anything, notice the points that I bring up. Bring up these same points. This is your argument all the time. So pay attention to what is being said. Remember, there's no practice. There's nobody sitting behind me telling me, no, you should say this. I am not going off and like she's doing. She has to go confer with somebody. She has to go two heads are better than one with somebody. I don't do the two heads are better than one. I do the, I'm about to chop your head off. Okay, reduce you down to size. That's what I do. So y'all hold on one second. At that point. I had not said anything of the sort at that point. It was after that that I told him not to say anything else because she was speaking directly to him and ignoring me. She lied, miss. I need to file a complaint against her. As a matter of fact, both myself and Brian are going to file a complaint against her because she lied on both of us.
Okay. I will That's get called that. a deceptive you know, I appreciate practice. You, I appreciate you letting me know, and I am going to go ahead and, you know, take action on that. But I do want to. I do want to express you know, this before I, we go on. I do want to express this. The law prohibits deceptive practices while in the midst of collecting a debt. The recording said that this was a debt collector calling. That was deception. That was a deceptive practice. That's why I'm highlighting it. She lied during the communication, interfering with his challenging a portion or disputing a portion of the debt. We're only going to focus on a portion of the debt. That's all we're here to talk about today. The law says he has the right to dispute any portion of the debt. And once that portion of the debt is disputed, you all must provide proof, verification, and validation of that portion of the debt being disputed. You've only been providing validation of the debt. Nobody's asked Midland about validation. Not a single letter says anything about validation. We specifically said verification. And we told you the portion of the debt we're disputing. You haven't provided any information to the present day. Because you haven't, you're still continuing with debt collection activities. I do believe that that's a violation of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. I don't know. But mm, it looks like we're going to have to get somebody to help you guys understand that. That's what we're here to talk about today. We're not here to talk about his loan. We're here to talk about the violation of his rights under the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Graham Leach Bailey Act. Those are the things we're here to talk about. I do apologize. I'm so sorry. I don't want to, you know, I understand you're frustrated, but I want to start off right on this call. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ava, and I also wanted to have Brian introduce himself to me. To let me know that, you know, he's there. You're there. He's already told you he's here. He's not going to say another word. He's already told you that he's here. He's already told you about the previous know, conversation I, and him I, I verifying himself twice. I no, sir. no, hey, no, no, no. We're not here to do what you want. Me. I have power of attorney. You don't get to ignore that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not over speaking well, I, you. I, I'm I, trying to tell you you're not going to ignore the power of attorney. The law doesn't I am allow so you. I'm sorry, but I need him to give me his first and last name. I need him no, you to don't. let me know that you're on there. I said no. Your, I mean, I literally said no, no three I'm, times I apologize. already. I apologize. I'm not going to okay. be able to continue with the call if you, you know, if you keep. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We're not talking about him. We're not talking about him right now. We're talking about me. I talked about the letters that we sent to you. That's what I was talking. I said we're going to focus on the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. I did say that, didn't I? I'm the reason for the call, not Brian. I understand, but I need to verify okay. Brian. Like I need to. No, we're not going to verify Brian again. I'm sorry. I apologize. Not, I mean, I need to speak to him. Mm -hmm. I need to. You I, know, I know. know his I know. I, know. I need to know his first and last name. I know. I know. That's 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 good. He's already told you he's been verified twice. You don't get to verify him the third time. If, unless you can show me a law or a policy that allows you to do that while being transferred and call and it wasn't a cold transfer, by all means, we'll provide Give it. me one second. Give me yes, one second. Yes, we will. I'm put you on the Go right ahead. Okay? Go right ahead. You know, I don't let her speak. You see, you go through a lot with them. They give you the same runaround, same story. I don't have time. I, I don't, we don't need to speak to her. I don't need to speak to any of them. I just need to document this. They're recording this call. Did you file the lawsuit I sent you with both your name and my name on it? All due in tax and interest statements will be no later than January. You can't hear me at this point. However, you can view this information today by visiting. Wait, wait, wait. You said, oh no, you filed the document that had both our names on it. You haven't filed the lawsuit with both our names on it. Oh, I've mailed it. So I guess I got to go down to court. Wait, was it a lawsuit that you filed or was it just a document into the case? Who's the. 
I used the same case number and I basically Okay, yeah, no, no, no. You were filing a document into that case. I will process a lawsuit against them and demanding a temporary restraining order and I'll put both our names on the case this time. And I'll be willing to pay. See, like I said, Fair Day Quincy's practice at power of attorney, they don't have a choice but to recognize that. And they will not get to ignore that. Give me a second, let me pull up your file. As I was saying, you notice how I didn't let her speak because she's a supervisor. So she's used to commanding people, demanding things of people. She's used to telling people the way things are going to be. I don't allow her to tell me the way things are going to be. Let me turn that down. She, she doesn't get to dictate to me. This is me giving him the date. Signature to the with your payment coupon. Thank you for your patience. Someone will be with you shortly. That's me giving him the date. Some documents. Uh, let me take a look at this. Now, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to tell him. I have to ask him. Did we already send him the documents? Did the company already send him the documents? He's going to say, yes, they have. Now I'm going to tell him what he should be doing with those documents, the same as I explained to you guys at the beginning of this conversation, what you should be using those documents for. That is your preponderance of evidence to the contrary. You have signatures, proof of service, and a notary presentment. That's your preponderance of evidence to the contrary of any argument they can bring up. Okay, and that's what she's about to focus on right now. Watch. Hold on a second, y'all. Now, while that's in the background, let me go ahead and explain that this call took over an hour. This is a 38-minute section right here. We're seven minutes into the 38 minutes, so we have 30 more minutes of her not doing anything. Are you behind on your mortgage? And payment? you're going to hear me. You to apply for the you're going to hear me tell Brian at the end that she's going to come back and she's going to not say anything and not do anything and not accomplish anything. That's a routine, people. That's not, they're not, she's not doing anything in the background. That's the, um, dictating what's going on in the background, because I've been through this many times. And that's exactly what she's doing. What he, she's interfering because that's what her job is. She wants to be in control, so she's trying to take control of the conversation by getting me to put, capitulate to her getting you to reveal information that I said no to. So she's trying to play tug of war with me, and she's trying to suggest that that's a battle she can win. Yeah, see, right now it's a testosterone thing. The supervisor, whatever her name is, Ann or whatever her name is, she's trying to show she's got more testosterone in her system, and she's going to be stubborn. I ain't got time for her stubbornness. I ain't got time for her ignorance. I ain't got time for her stupidity. I don't have time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing a conversation the way I would have it with anybody. I've dealt with other debt collectors the same way. You guys have got to stop being afraid of the courts. You've got to stop telling yourself, well, they said I shouldn't go to court. That is the dumbest stuff in the world. Stop listening to that stupidity. Okay, you can only beat them with their own system at their own game. You guys heard the phrases before, beating somebody at their own game. Now, who's the trustee of the trust? You visited our website. It's an easy Brian, and I can't hear him when he speaks because of the stupid audio. So I tell him we're going to talk about it later. Hold on. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it later. See, told you. <laughs> All right. She's about to come back on in a second. And you're going to see where the conversation is going to go. She's still going to be trying to insist that he speak. Nine minutes ago, so I do have her saying what she just said, and I will use that information. Yeah, I should have been recording the whole call, but I'm not in that habit yet, y'all. I, I, I got to hit the button to record. Got a brand new phone. My brand new phone is an Android phone, and it records calls. 
don't even have to make it record calls. It just does it. Okay? And I like it. And it's an Android 13, not a 15, like y'all, y'all, y'all rich people. But I do like the phone. The phone does me pretty good. It's pretty hefty. It's a rugged phone. I do like my phone. Ladies and gentlemen, when she comes back on, she's going to be doing the debt collection thing. She's not there to settle anything or resolve anything. She's there to say no. And you're going to notice that she's not going to give in. She's going to put her foot in the ground and she's going to plant it and she's going to stay there in that position. And I need her to stay in that position. This call wasn't to accomplish them getting something done because that's not the way they operate, ladies and gentlemen. They want to sell the home. They're going to sell it and we'll deal with the consequences later because they're never going to take us to court. And it's because many of you guys don't take them to court that they get away with the stupidity. It's because many of you don't take them to court is why they get rid uh, get away with the stupidity. So I'm waiting. That when that that's when you guys hear are here in the background. You can even hear it now. That's the swamp cooler. I have it blowing directly on me every day. Well, actually, the back of the chair. Okay, and that means it's not directly on me. You know what I'm saying? But I have it blowing in the area that I'm in to cool it down because this is the side of the property that the sun is on. We have a lot to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. I am hoping that she will come back soon. And then we let y'all get on what you're getting on. I am, I am going to be very proud of what I'm making right now. And when I say very proud of what I'm making, I mean very proud of what I'm making. Yay! And... I forgot to add the rest of my vegetation. Um, you know, this is uh, okay. I do apologize for the hold. Are you still there? Yes, we're here. Okay, all right. And then um, I wanted to ask you. I know you said you sent in your POA information several times. Where did you send it to? Eleven twenty-three was the last day. We sent it to your actual corporate office. And we also sent it to Mid First as well as Midland. Okay. What Three different times. Did you send that to? I will have to pull back through the files. Give it a second for me to go back through the files. We were I was in the process of working on another uh, document for another client, so give me a moment to just complete this section here. You said you, you guys sent that back in November? Sent it back in November, sent it in several other dates. I was just going over them with the dates a moment ago, but it'll be right now that we we'll be able to chat with somebody one second. We've been going through for a while, and you guys have been ignoring. We haven't received a single document, but we do have confirmation that the documents have been received. So give me a moment to go into our database uh, because we have staff members set the power of attorneys um, and I'm getting ready to take a look at the staff members on the proof of service side. Getting ready to take a look at some of the proof of services. I apologize, that's me drinking lemonade. Matter, like I said, he's been verified twice on here. I, I understand and you know I am I I am sorry that you know this is going on and that you were just you know tampered so many times. Um, but in order for me to be able to assist you, I oh, no. need we're not to... talking about we're not talking about his mortgage. I just told you that twice. We're talking about the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. That's all we're talking about. We're and the communication, the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, the FDCPA, and the communications we've sent to you that hasn't been responded to. That's what this call is all about. Well, I'm definitely not calling about Brian. Uh, and Brian's mortgage, he's just on the line because we're representing his interests. I'm going to let y'all listen. I got to go to UPS. To find out which address was for Midland because I believe it is on the actual document that was sent. So it'll be one second for me to reopen. Let's see. Okay. Give me one second, okay? Yes, go right ahead. Where are you looking? Well, you look, well, you look for that, okay? Yeah, yes, yes, go right ahead. 
you to apply for the mortgage assistance program. Right. I don't keep your actual the mortgage files assistance program with may me. Be able to help you get a fresh start the staff by catching does the you files. up on your past due payments to bring your loan current again. You can apply for the mortgage assistance programs we offer okay. by simply speaking to a representative Hi. or by visiting our website at mymidlandmortgage.com. That's a long time. Give me one second. This is the computer document. Let's see where they put the creditor's information. I got to get into my mail, my email, and I'm not, it's not letting me log into the email. Has your mailing address or phone number changed? Do you need accurate contact information to provide you with timely information about your loan? Please let us know okay. if you speak to a representative, or you can update your address or phone number on our website at mymidlandmortgage.com. Thank you for It took that long for the system to let me get into my email, and it went into the wrong email. Got rid of my email. Okay. Who wants to play that game? It'll be one second. I have to open the email all over again. You visited our website? It's an easy and convenient way to access your detailed payment and escrow transaction history, make a payment, order a payoff statement, and much more. You can visit MyMidlandMortgage.com 24 hours a day. If it is your first time visiting our website, use the Sign Up button to get started. property damage that you have or plan to file an insurance claim with your insurance company, you can obtain the necessary information, documents, and steps for receiving your insurance claim funds to repair your home by visiting our website at mymidlandmortgage.com. Thank you for your patience. Someone will be with you shortly. Brian, you received the K-1s, didn't you? Uh, yes, email? Yeah. Okay. I, really, I wish I can't keep going over stuff with you guys because the law prohibits certain things. <laughs> Northwest Fran. So, Northwest Fran Boulevard, Oklahoma. Midland Mortgage Company. So, give me a second. Write this down, Brian. I'm looking for the date. October 24th, 2023. And 999 Northwest. Just keep that in mind. Oklahoma. 999 Northwest you can Oklahoma. Online payment option. You can make a one-time payment that will be withdrawn from your checking or savings account. Your payment Go transactions ahead. connected. And they received communications on the 24th of October from TransUnion and Equifax and Experian. Visit our website at mymidlandmortgage.com and click on Pay My Mortgage. And Thank you for holding. Someone will be with you Portland shortly. Avenue, 2730 Portland Avenue. That went to Mid First Bank and Oklahoma on the 24th of October. So 2730 Portland Avenue, Oklahoma, October 24th, 2023. 
see if there was a problem with the power of attorney. Now they would have raised okay. it. I apologize okay. for the hold. We were able to find the dates of the documents. You said you were able to find it? Yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry, it sounds like really windy or... It is, it is the fan. Far away. It's 117 degrees outside, so that's the fan. Um, okay. We sorry found the dates for the documents. Okay. And the when did you send that in? October 23rd, October 24th to your Portland address and your, what is it, Finland um, Northwest address in Oklahoma. Both addresses are Oklahoma addresses. Okay. Several communications going to that those two addresses because those are the addresses are you we have on file. Are you sending it to 999 North 999 West Boulevard? 999, exactly. Okay. 999. That's one of the addresses. That's one of the two. Okay. I will notate that that you sent it there. Um, Midland and Mid First. I know you said that you're calling. I, I know that you said you're not calling about his account. You're calling in regards to the. Our communications. Fair debit. Fair debt collections practices yeah, so, out. Okay. So how how is it that we're violating it? Well, first by not recognizing the power of attorney. You have not as a company communicated back with us once. We've been sending communication on a regular basis over thirty three different communications. We do this for each of our clients. They've not communicated back with us once. Each of these are debt collection request because we're asking for the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act allows any portion of the debt to be disputed. On behalf of Ryan, we're disputing the original funding for the loan. He was promised that he was to receive funding. We don't have a bank account that the funds went into. You guys are claiming that there is an outstanding debt. Well, the law says that you have to get this information from the original creditor. You are not the original creditor, so the information has to come from the original creditor to you, then to us, then to Brian. We've not received anything that purports to be from the original creditor regarding our specific request. Now, we have received documents, copies of the note, the address for the original creditor, and their name. That's validation. We're doing verification. Verification and validation are not the same thing. The law says that you cannot proceed with any debt collection activities until you verify the portion of the debt being disputed. You guys are continuing with debt collection activities, so we're getting ready to file a lawsuit demanding a jury trial and a TRO. Okay. Is there a way that you can send a written complaint? <laughs> we have, Miss. I just told you 33 different letters. Lord, okay. Can you send that to our correspondence address? Do you have that address? It's a P.O. box? No, we would never have sent it to a P.O. box. We do not mail to P.O. box. We mail to the corporate office directly, always. If you guys are ignoring the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, that's not our fault. We send it directly to corporate because this is a corporate matter. This is not a correspondence matter. You guys are ignoring our client. You're ignoring the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act by communicating with our client. You're violating that portion of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, which gives him the right so, okay. to hire so us. So we're violating because we're communicating with him? Is that That's what you're saying? That's correct. 100% correct. This is an attorney-client okay. relationship. You are not permitted to talk to him without going through us. The same with you and your attorneys. You guys keep sending him to the legal department. You have no idea how highly offensive that is. You want to follow it when it's convenient as a company. Its right to power of attorney is embedded in the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. That's why we sent you two power of attorneys. Okay. How is it that you want me to assist you? We're needing to find out from you guys. Uh, first, this is an FHA loan. We ask for verification 
of the original loan. It's a government guaranteed, government insured loan, government obligation. If he has failed to make a payment, anybody fails to make a payment on an FHA loan or any government loan, there's insurance. Nobody has given him any option for following an insurance claim as to any hardship. That creates a problem. We've asked for verification of the original funding of the loan. We've not received anything, not a single shred of paper. We've already included, uh, let's see, Jeffrey Records, Jr., 20, uh, 2730 North Portland Avenue, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 7, I believe that's 3107. We're sending it to the right address. That's only one of the addresses of the two that I was talking about. So we're sending it, to, and this was mid first bank, because we do know that we have a parent company and a mortgage company. We have two different companies. One's a bank and one is actually a mortgage company. So we're sending it to both. And we have Ken Clark, 999 Northwest Grand Boulevard, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma 79118, I believe. We're sending it to the right people. Or 73118. Um, those people are not communicating. See, we're not just sending it to just anybody. We're sending it to the representatives. Ken Clark and the other individual who I mentioned a moment ago. And no response to none of our communication. Jeffrey Records, Jr., those are the two people who have been receiving it, being addressed to them. Then we've also been sending it to the department office directly without addressing it to a particular individual. Okay. All right. I apologize. Give me one second. Let me put you on a brief hold. Let me see what we can no, do. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. You did get a copy, Brian. You did get a copy of the documents, a uh, zip file of all the documents processed in your card. Let us know yeah. when you speak to a representative, or you can update uh, your address or phone number on our website. Yeah. I can't hear you. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, I'll ask you when it's over. All right. I need you to print out each one of those documents. Okay. See, that's your proof that you have been operating under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Now, here's the point. I'm going to take this and I'll probably post it because this part, it's been 27 minutes and we've been on this call for one hour. So it's not the whole call, it's only the call of this representative. I'm going to go ahead and put it online so people can hear the conversation. So that they can hear it because we're doing this for all of our clients. See, we can't stop them from their ignorance, but we can provide you guys with the documentation and the paperwork. Okay, that's why the federal lawsuit was filed, for which the court hasn't responded. And I'm going to let them play their game because that's what they do. They're being a little overwhelmed by all the documents being placed on the record. Oh, I haven't even talked to her about the arbitration agreement that was sent. Do you have property damage that you have or pay the file? Oh, I'm sorry. You guys need to understand the problem of attorneys the necessary information included an arbitration agreement. For receiving your insurance claim from to so what do they chose to ignore or respond? Thank you for your patience. Someone will be with you shortly. We also sent it to a Jerry Bassett. Jerry Bassett, who else was... I believe Jerry Bassett is the president of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do. We don't just take your money. We send out many communications. I don't go through any of the files like this because there's no need. If you have any difficulty making your monthly payments, please let us know. We will review your account and explain the options that may be available to help you. Please be assured that we want to work with you to help you keep your home and to protect your investments. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we were just 117 degrees today. Now we have clouds and I'm seeing some rain. Okay, that's because of the monsoons. So um, they did say that there was a high chance that likelihood that we might get some drizzle. Um, but the temperature has dropped dramatically. Went from 117. I now have the notary presentment as well. So I am glad that I did go through this. We're still 101 degrees outside, but the cloud cover right now, my air conditioning is blowing as if it's at 69 degrees. For me, it's quite cold. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting day. All right, let's get back to AMCF, Merrill Legion, the acceptance you know, debt acknowledgement so program. affidavit of presentment. This was sent 7-12-2024. Now you're going to hear me highlight to the woman. This can't, this can't have been sent 7-12-2024. Yeah, I'm going to let him talk for just a second, but what you're going to find is she's going to come back on and I'm going to highlight the notary presentment. Oh. It was sent 3-23. Uh, so 3-23-23 was the exact date that the notary presentment was sent. And you're going to hear me highlight that to her. So I don't need to send you no other documents, woman. <laughs> what you mean, send it to you again? I'm not sending you nothing again. That thing was sent certified mail, Today, notary presentment. So I know that those dates are wrong. Yeah, you guys can't see my screen. Yeah, that's 324 2023. 324 2023. Have a date of 712. 2024. Because I opened it in Google, so Google that's changed the date. I don't know. That's the system doing that. The system is changing the date on the document. Give me a second. Let me download the document. And take a look at the actual date. Okay. Now, while that's happening, ladies and gentlemen, all of you EON Organization Association people. Now, if you notice, we've got no answers to no questions. She's still stuck on the power of attorney, even though you're on the phone. I'm going to pause that for a second, and so I'm going to explain to you guys. You have all of the proof. We thought that many of you guys would read the website and would understand that we are there not to get rid of your mortgage, but to help you prove you don't have a mortgage. You don't owe a dime. That's what we're doing. The number one thing you have going for you is that they never provided verification of the disputed portion of the debt. We were quite clear in each of these 30 some letters what we were disputing, why? Because the law says you get to dispute any portion of the debt. That means any part of the debt you get to dispute. So we're just disputing simple portions of the debt. That's it. And they never provided any response to our disputed. They just said the debt is valid. Well, nobody was challenging validity we were disputing a portion of the debt. And you can't just simply respond, the debt is valid. You must verify. That's verification. Validation and verification are two separate things. They don't mean the same thing under the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Well, anyway, just go and look at the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Y'all know. 1592G, I think it is. I'm not sure. I don't pay attention to that junk. Just go read that junk. And just do a word search for any portion, just any portion. That's it. And then understand what any means. It means any. Any means any. Any, many, money. Any means any. So we're disputing certain portions of the debt. We know they will never, ever provide verification. And because we know that they'll never, they'll never ever provide verification, the law says we have the right to verification in those disputed portions. They say that they must provide verification on the disputed portion, and it must come from the original creditor. It has to come from the original creditor. Go to them, and they're supposed to send it to us. Well, notice none of the documents you receive has any signatures. Nothing showing it's from the original creditor. Well, it's on a letterhead. So it's on a letterhead. 
That's not proof that it's from the original creditor. That's coming from the debt collector, not the original creditor. And if you check the records, you'll see that it's not coming from the original creditor. Ta-da! That's how this works. Look, there is no debt in the United States. But they, 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 shut up. There is no debt. It's only accusations of debt. Okay, that's all there is. Accusations of debt. Let me see. I think... No, I don't have it up. I, I had a document from the Federal Reserve and their ignorance responding back to me. is The document is completely stupid. And I'm going to use it against them in the lawsuit. I've already put the other Federal Reserve documents on the record. But I'll be using that document against them. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we'll get to the last several minutes of this. One second. See, that's how they take control of conversations. This was done on uh, March 23rd, 2023. That's when we received the uh, notification of debt. I mean, uh, notarization. Because we did a notary protest. automatically from your checking or savings account. Sign up today at MyMidlandMortgage.com or use the form found with your payment coupon. Thank you for your patience. Someone will be with you shortly. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm doing, I decided... All right, so we have our notary presentment. And we have our notary affidavit. Are you behind on your mortgage payment? If so, we would like to encourage I am doing to the Barack Obama traditional um, seafood stew. By catching you up on your past due payments to bring you okay. Again. You, you know what seafood stew is? It's called gumbo. But... Not if you Barack Obama and you getting pre becoming president and your first meal at the White House is going to be seafood stew. I am $10,000 per hour. This is an hour and six minutes. So what will happen is because we do have a contract, we have the arbitration agreement that's been sent to all uh, companies. Um, this, I will be charging them by our rate, and it's rounded up and not rounded down. So, our is You need accurate contact information to provide and all that takes is a K1 file. Please let us know if you speak to a representative or you can update that last part, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm not going to take the time to explain anytime soon, but I will eventually take the time to explain. So let me get you guys to understand. I can document that I've been doing this for 40 years. 41 now. I've been doing it since I was 15, starting this month. This is when I first got my first ticket. It's the month of July, 1983. What's gonna happen is she's eventually gonna come back and not do anything. I anticipate and expect that, that's normal. So nothing that's happening right now is anything that now, remember, I just said what she's going to do is she's going to come back and she's going to not do anything. So watch that. Listen to that again. We'll let it go on for a second. What's going to happen is she's eventually going to come back and not do anything. I anticipate and expect that. That's normal. So nothing that's happening right now is anything that I am not used to. Now listen to this conversation. They're trying to figure out how to get rid of me. They're doing research on me right now. They're calling up and asking me where he is, who is he, and how come he's able to do this? And do you know how much time he's taking of us today just because we can't do what we normally do? That's what's going on. Yeah, they're doing an investigation right, on me. Here she is. Oh, yeah, we've been having a great right, time talking. So... I'm sorry? Nothing. Nothing. Never mind. Okay. Well, um, I was directed by our legal department to have you send that into our appeal box. 
No. Um, which is through Honda. No. <laughs> no. No. We're going to follow the law. Your legal Care department your legal can. Department? Ooh, let me be nice. Your legal <laughs> department know where they can go. The law doesn't require me to listen to your legal department. The law requires me to listen to the law. And let's see, where's that last thing we sent? We also sent the notary presentment, miss. Notary presentment. Now, you may not be familiar with notary presentments, but notary presentments, that's a notary. We have our certificates of service. Jerry Bassett. Do you know who Jerry Bassett is? Apparently, that's somebody very important in your company. He's the third person we sent it to. That's the notary presentment. Notary affidavit of notary presentment. Yeah, your legal department has no justification. So you guys can ignore me today. Go right ahead. I, I promise you, ignore me again. And I will make Midland stay. I promise. And I will do it legally. I told you, the one thing that I hate, and you've seen this conversation is starting I mean, with this, is to have somebody ignore me. I, I've complained about it since the beginning of this call. So I told Brian, before you came on, I said we were talking. I told Brian, you're going to come back on. <laughs> you're not going to do anything. And you're going to keep trying to stand on that one little footing for which you have no justification. I'm recording this call because we're going to court. I just needed to show how you guys treat people when they call to get some simple information. I was only calling about the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act then you're not following it. And the many documents we've sent to you, we've sent to you, not Brian, we've sent them to you. If you had a problem with those documents, you should have responded. But by law, you didn't respond. This is not about being sorry. This is about me saying, no more. You don't get to do that to me. You can do it to all the other companies out there, but I don't allow it. I've been doing this for 40 years. I don't allow it. But since you guys want to play this game, if you're going to tell us that you can't do anything further, then we can just hang up this call because I don't have any more time. I'm $10,000 per hour. You guys have held us on this call okay. for an hour and 11 minutes. I'm going to charge you for that. An hour and 11 minutes okay. is how long this call and has she lasted. Says okay, so she agrees to be and charged. 11 minutes, and we've accomplished absolutely nothing. You keep putting us on hold, and you're getting paid to put us on hold. How dare you? Uh, miss, goodbye. Brian, go ahead and hang up the phone. Okay, well, you have a good day. No, you. She... I want to start. No, oh, I don't want to start. Hold on, I want to gentlemen. file the complaint, miss. Um, Y'all didn't hear what I told her to have, okay? I apologize for that. I, I'd had enough. Oh, no. Y'all want to play? We're going to play. So we're getting ready to do a quiet title, as I suggested to Brian, but we're going to do a quiet title in a unique way, the same way we told you about on the video yesterday. But I'm going to be involved in this particular quiet title. Hey, here's the thing. There's a possibility if any of you have a Midland account and you want to join the quiet title, we're bringing it up on the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. So we're going to be we're going to harp on the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. It will be filed next week. Now he will also be filing uh, bankruptcy. He has no other choice. See, what you guys don't understand is this is their locomotive. They're moving full steam ahead. They do not care. Pay attention, please. They do not care about right and wrong and the law. They do not care. So it's our job to make them care. We're going to give them a care package. All right. As I said, we gave all of our clients their file. I authorized it to be sent to everybody because we had all of the documents sent out. There's one more document being sent out in addition, but it's not going to interfere with what you guys are doing. You're going to have to take them to court. I've been saying this from the very beginning. Quiet title is your best action. Remember, the documents we provide you is proof that you were challenging a portion of the debt. See, nobody's ever, pay attention, nobody's ever challenged a portion of the debt. Do you understand? Everybody's always validation not verification give me one second let me show it to y'all i want y'all to pay attention to this if a consumer notifies a debt collector in writing within the 30-day period described in section a of this section of the debt uh, excuse me of this section that the debt or 
any portion thereof is disputed. Any portion. Any means any. Any portion of the debt is disputed. Or the consumer requested, or the consumer requests the name, address of the original creditor, blah, blah, blah. The debt collector shall cease collection of the debt. Now, I don't want to go to the Fair Trade uh, Commission. I don't want to do that. I want to go to the actual law. Okay? I want to go with any portion of the debt. I'm not looking for Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. I'm looking for this right here. 1692G. We're going to go down to any portion of the debt or any portion thereof is disputed. The collector will obtain verification of the debt. Not the collector, the debt collector, not the collector providing verification of the debt, but they have to obtain verification of the debt from the original creditor. And a copy of such verification will be mailed to the consumer by the debt collector. You have the right to challenge, to dispute any portion of the debt. That's your right. So we choose to dispute certain portions of the debt we know that they can never provide. That the original creditor will never provide. Because it proves fraud. Ta-da! And now we can sue because we can document that they did not pay attention. The debt collector will obtain verification. Do you understand that? Will obtain disputed debt. If the consumer notifies the debt collector in writing within 30 days, blah, 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 that a debt or any portion thereof is disputed, and we don't care about that, the debt collector shall cease collection of the debt or any disputed portion thereof until the debt collector obtains from a different source other than himself verification of the debt, not validation. Validation is the name, pay attention, or a copy of a judgment or the name and address of the original creditor or the name and address Well, nobody's disputing that. Y'all can have the original creditor's name and address. We want verification. And a copy of such verification is mailed to the consumer by the debt collector. Collection activity commun and communications that do not otherwise violate this chapter may continue during the 30-day period referenced in blah, 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 unless the consumer notifies the debt collector in writing that the debt or any portion thereof is disputed or that consumer requests the name, blah, blah, blah. Any collection activities and communications during the 30-day period may not overshadow or be inconsistent with the disclosure of this consumer's right to dispute the debt and request the name, see, to dispute the debt or request the name and address of the original creditor. Disputing the debt is not the same as validation. Disputing the debt is not the same as validation. You must understand that. That is highly, extremely, very important. Important. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be under an hour because I just needed to give you guys this to let you see how things actually happen. This is my disputing a debt. This is my way and the company's way of disputing debts. Documentation, documentation, documentation. As I said yesterday, Maxine Waters taught me that documentation is everything. That's why we've been documenting everything. We hope you guys are going to use it because it was done for you. Got to go. Take care.